It's one thing to seize the day quietly and out of the public gaze, and quite another to do so on reality television. This didn't deter Kim and Pashi from pursuing their dream to bring a fresh, Eastern-inspired edge to the South African food scene. It wasn't plain sailing, but today they are high-profile culinary entrepreneurs. And I made up with them to share something of their lives and their cooking. Kamisha Naidu, better known as Kim, and Pashi Reddy are soulmates and adventurers who took up the challenge of demonstrating their skills in the kitchen to the judges and audience of a popular reality show. They made it all the way through to the finals and described this as a life-changing experience, which transformed them into celebrities overnight. A mutual passion for food and adventure make Kim and Pashi a dynamic duo in the kitchen. I'm going on a culinary adventure with the couple and we're hitting some of Durban's iconic spots while we're at it. Their passion for food is matched by a love of fashion, which they share with their enthusiastic followers on social media. What are you two up to? Hello, hello. hello Jack, yeah. <laughs> This is actually one of our favorite spots to hang out with with family and friends and we thought today is such a beautiful sunny day so we can get some amazing pictures with Pashi and I love doing. When did you both realize you had a passion for food? I think when I realized Kim on the first date didn't order the salad, <laughs> <laughs> I knew she was the one. So from there, our journey of experiencing food and going out to local eateries, it just became something we really loved and bonded over. Pashi, what is your take on street food and what are some of your favorite dishes? Street food is one of our major influences. It inspires us to cook really flavorful dishes, things that really get us excited and uh, new flavors and experiences from different cultures. Zakia, we actually want to take you to one of our favorite spots in Durban. We get the most amazing bunny chows here and we've been inspired and created our own. So let's go. I am so I'm glad you asked. They make a perfect couple, but Zaki wondered what had actually brought them together. How did you two meet? Pasha and I actually met at a Durban July. He was like, hey pretty lady, can I buy you a drink? And I was like... He turned me down. <laughs> yeah, and then like we, we reconnected like a few say months after that over Facebook and yeah from then it's been ridiculously good. Yeah we were we realized we were soulmates just by the conversation. You two were finalists in a reality TV cooking show. What was this experience like? Oh, it was absolutely amazing. What an incredible experience. The high pressure yeah. really grows as a couple, hence the engagement on the show. <laughs> and yeah, you really experience the highs and lows. We've really grown in our cooking. I can speak for myself. I came into my own, you know, Pashi being the cook. And yeah, I, we had a beautiful experience. What makes a great bunny chow? I think really good quality meat is very important and not to be scared of fat. And lots and lots of gravy. Okay. Super. Uh, thank you very uh, much. You wow. Wow, that looks amazing. Thank you so much. Do you think you could do a Kim and Pashi take on a bunny chow for our Mela viewers? We would love to do that, but after we finish these amazing bunnies. Of course. A big, fat, spicy bunny is a meal that cannot be enjoyed in a hurry. And it was a little while before the threesome arrived back at Pasha's home with his panoramic view of the city. I'm so full from that bunny. Well, it's time to taste our version of it, so... <laughs> <laughs> Give me some time. <laughs> I'm gonna stay here so I'm out of your way. Okay. What is going to make your bunny stand out? Kim and I have launched our range of spices and what we've created is our own unique blend that has no MSG, no preservatives, no coloring agents. It's pure, 100% spice and we've roasted and blended it for everyone. So it's convenient and we're going to show you how simple they are because Kim's going to move on to making a beautiful curry while I hop along and make the bread. So for my bread, I'm going to start with the water, about 100 mils, and then we're going to move on to the yeast. Then we're going to add a cup and a half of flour and then we're going to add some salt, just a pinch. Finally, we're going to finish off with some beautiful olive oil and then we let the magic happen. So we're just going to add a bit more flour now just so it binds nicely together. We don't want it too thin, we don't want it too thick. So that's the perfect consistency. What we're going to do now is just clean it off. I'm just going to flour the base 
and we're gonna knead that for about five minutes to get the perfect consistency, and then we're gonna let it proof. So what you wanna do is start left to right and do this for five minutes, and this will create the perfect texture and bring it all together. You wanna work those glutens, not your glutes. <laughs> Once that's done, you're gonna bring it together beautifully into a nice little ball. You're gonna let that proof you can either cover it with a nice damp cloth and let it rise, or you can put it in a nice, humid, warm area and it'll do the magic itself. So Zakia, while Pashi's watching the dough proof, I'm going to be working on the derbud curry today. Our oil is hot enough now, as you can hear, and I'm going to be adding in our blended onion. We like to use blended onion because it adds to the gravy, and who doesn't like a beautiful gravy in their bunny? Just stir it about. Get the oil coated nicely. We're going to add a pinch of curry leaf. You can add about a handful, should be enough. Next, we are going to go on to your blended garlic and ginger. This also helps quicken the process that all our ingredients are blended. We're going to let this coat nicely and this in every Indian home gets the house smelling good. Next, we are going to be adding in our chopped up lamb. We're gonna let the lamb coat up very nicely in the oil and the curry leaf and ginger and garlic paste. So while the meat is stirring off, we're going to be adding our Durban curry spice pot. As you can see, it's not your traditional curry. There are no whole spices put in here, so we're just gonna keep stirring it so just so your curry does not catch. And next up, I'm going to be adding our tomato puree. We're going to add about two or three tablespoons and then we're gonna let that cook down. You can use store-bought tomato puree or you can blend your own. I'm going to now add some coriander, just a handful. This is just to really layer the flavors and we're going to give it a stir about. What's so important about a bunny is really having a beautiful gravy. Those aromas are delectable. Now I think this is ready for some salt to taste. So now we're going to let this simmer off and I'm going to put the pot lid on and let that cook for about 40 minutes. So our bread dough has proofed and it's looking amazing. I'm gonna show you a little trick to know when it's ready. You just give it a little poke and if the indentations stay in, you know that it's risen perfectly. And now we're gonna move over to this tin and this is to create a beautiful square bun. So we don't use all the dough, just one third. And what we're gonna do is place it into this beautiful tin and we're gonna have a square loaf of bread. And that's ready for the oven. Let's have a look at how our gravy is looking. Oh wow, that looks absolutely beautiful. Now it's time for the potatoes. What we have done here is we have microwave the potatoes. This just helps with the cooking time and it helps quicken the process. And then we give it a little bit of a stir. And now we're just gonna let our potatoes cook in with our gravy and leave it for about 20 minutes. And I'm gonna put back my lid. So we've got this out the oven. It's cooled down a bit. And we're gonna take the pan and put it onto the heat. And then we're gonna add our butter. Just a few nubs for now and let that melt down. So we're gonna take this beautiful bread, we're gonna just flip it over and it's beautifully cubed and risen. So now we're gonna melt that butter, it's almost ready. We're gonna go back to our bread and as you can see, it's beautifully done. This is all about getting that brown butter flavor, which everyone loves, who doesn't like butter? And that's what you want, a beautiful brown crust. That's gonna give it almost a brioche kind of taste. We're gonna remove that off the heat. That's good, that's perfect. We're gonna let it rest for now, and then we're gonna plate that later once the curry is ready. Oh wow, this is looking absolutely stunning, Zakia. Mm. And now we're going to garnish with some coriander. Coriander is a must in a Durban curry. That looks unbelievable. Thanks. Well done, you. So Zaki, you've experienced the bunny earlier, and now we're gonna plate our style of the bunny. So if you could make your way down to the table, we'll bring the surprise to you. Can't wait for you to try it. I am so looking forward to it. The basic concept remains true to tradition, but Kim and Pashi take the bunny to a new level paying meticulous attention to the selection of ingredients and style of preparation, as well as the garnishing and presentation. <gasps> Enjoy. <gasps> it 
It's like magic. So Zaki, pour that beautiful gravy over that bunny and enjoy. Okay. Wow. Now that is how a bunny should look. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is great. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for such a fun day. It was an absolute pleasure having you. I am eating a Michelin star worthy bunny chow. Kim and Pashi seem to make anything possible and everything impossibly tasty. Food is but one of Kim and Pashi's shared interests and they also travel and explore as much as possible. It's all part of the process of broadening their horizons and making the most of the journey of life.